Leader Pafford in debate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, uh, like most of uh, regular session and special session, I, uh, I do applaud the um, Speaker uh, and his leadership in terms of how things have been conducted. I think everybody in here uh, has done a very good job in terms of how we debate and share our opinions uh, as different as sometimes they may be. Um, today's budget, uh, we have a $78.7 billion budget in front of us. Um, and the irony is there's $650 million more dollars in this budget that happen to be federal dollars. So if you're listening and, and you are voting on principle, those federal dollars are helping this budget uh, probably be one of the largest taxpayer funded budgets in the state's history. You want to talk about principle? Think about that. It's not smaller government, but apparently this thing's going to pass today. Um, and the irony is, is really Stunning. The budget doesn't reflect Floridians' priorities as much as it reflects short-sighted, narrow-minded thinking and planning in terms of where this state is going to go. We had some opportunities this year, um, as Representative Mia Jones noted. Um, I walked into this process very hopeful that I could support a budget. I, too, want to be able to leave after eight years, four terms, and support a budget. And there's nothing wrong with that. Certainly things could have been done, I think, that would have allowed me to do that. I committed to it in some of my previous debates. I wanted to do that because I think that would have been good for the state. Instead, um, there is no health care expansion. You expect me to lead off with that, I'll lead off with that. It's okay, we can talk about that. Um, there is no long-term solution. We left billions of dollars, federal dollars, the same ones that are in the budget that you're voting on to tomorrow, that allow this budget to balance according to the Constitution. You're going to vote on those, but we left a ton of those dollars, billions of dollars, out of this budget scenario. We limited our ability to do things like purchase more land. Could have happened. The Senate's position on bonding, I think, was ridiculous, but we accepted that. The, um, the hospitals are going to take a, t uh, a, a, a hit. Um, LIP is really wounded. LIP, in fact, is terminal, if you want to talk health care. That's an issue we're going to have to deal with. We didn't do it this year when we rightly could have done so. Um, lots of wait lists. We covered that. Seniors, elder, frail seniors in this state, people who need a meal delivered to their front door, perhaps an apartment cleaned, maybe, hair, uh, maybe their hair done, maybe help brushing their teeth, maybe being reminded if they have Alzheimer's or dementia, take their medicine. There's 40,000, maybe 50,000 of those people, and we've elected to knock off maybe four or 500. Really? We do this every single year, and I've said it every single year, and yet the House continues to do what the House would like to do. And that's pretty rough, but it doesn't stop there. ADP, 20,000 people on those wait lists. So what we did, this is ingenious. We took a sliver, the cream of that 20,000 list, and we defined it as high risk. And so now we'll wipe out, well, we'll wipe out that high risk category and leave 18,000 people on that wait list to continue to wait for some sort of assistance. Long-term care, that was about 11,000 long-term care. We're going to knock off a few hundred. We heard that earlier in questions. So, so far I'm not really pleased with what we did, by the way. You heard earlier that we're not in the recession, the great recession. We're rebounding. The economy's making Florida better. Well, what does this budget reflect? Shouldn't we use that opportunity to help the quality of life of Floridians? Shouldn't we plan more effectively? We didn't. Public education. Well, let's go back to Department of Corrections. Reeling from people dying in our system. Reeling and continuing to backpedal, uh, yet there's no fix. There is no fix to that. Oversight's questionable, and it continues to be a problem. I do believe we'll deal with that. 
but not enough done in this budget. Public education. First of all, we continue to say it's historic funding. I would not agree with that because we don't add inflation when you're talking about this. Okay, $7,079. Add inflation, and this is conservative because Palm Beach County says it's higher. That $7,097 should be $8,131. By the way, no coincidence, we're 41st in the nation when it comes to per pupil funding. We're not top 10, not top 20, not top 30, we're 41st. I can't be proud of that when we had an opportunity. Missed it. Early learning whittled down from 45,000 to 44,000. Ooh. How about those families that are waiting for a little assistance? Oh, we didn't do that. This should be a dramatic moment, folks, because we've missed an opportunity. 19 million people are waiting on us to do something, and we've let them down, in my opinion. Capital outlay for schools. Conventional public schools. We heard that, that word used today, conventional. 50 million. Charter schools, 50 million, and it's divvied out in a way, in my view, that's not fair to those conventional public schools or those children, or those families. $7.6 billion in the backs of Florida property owners, and now that, that makeup of funding for education, it's 50-50. 50-50, and that's not certainly happening. The bonding I mentioned already in terms of taking the Senate position, outrageous. I presume that there are folks in here in the rows in front of me that probably agree with that fact, so I'll take that home. We should have bonded. That was a great opportunity to do a lot more. But we missed that opportunity. So where are we now? For a chamber, and I heard this today, everybody loves our Constitution. Everybody swore, took an oath to support that Constitution. I did. The Constitution isn't like kittles, uh, kibbles and bit, bits, whatever the dog food is, right? You can't take a little chunk and decide that tastes really good. So because we're passing a budget, that's great. That is a constitutional requirement. But the Constitution's over, it's close to 100 pages. And the Constitution is a number of components to it, not just passing a budget. We have a paramount duty when it comes to education, as an example. That's in the Constitution. We have another duty to acquire land. That's a new one. In the Constitution. So you can't cherry pick things that are in the Constitution and feel that you've accomplished something. The Constitution is an entire document and we've got to do a better job understanding what makes that Constitution tick, what makes us better as a legislative body so we can support Floridians. Um, and then of course we've heard today that oops well, we left 57 days without completing the 60. Oops. Maybe that was worth it. Maybe that was vi worth violating the Constitution. I don't think that was worth violating the Constitution. That was an example of walking away when we had a chance to use a four days to get something done. The, um, the end result, really, is a budget that does nothing different than what we've seen over the last number of years. There's nothing courageous, there's nothing bold in this budget. Absolutely great things in this budget, but we heard about major items like vocational rehabilitation. I, I trust Chair Fresen that there was a discussion that occurred, but I didn't hear a plan today that is going to tell me what's going to happen with all those folks with those unique abilities who now don't have a $10 million amount to help support their transition. That worries me. We didn't take 80 days. In fact, I think we'll take about 76 because we're voting on this tomorrow. And we're just going to kick something out and say we really accomplished something in, in this budget. And we didn't. The quality of the work, the staff here, wonderful. I don't think you'd have a better staff. Um, but the staff allows us to do what we think, what our priorities are. 
they put our ideas into a document. And we ask them to put that in the document, and then we implement what those ideas are. And so in 90 days, we kickstart another session, go into committee weeks. We have get a lot of work that didn't get done in this budget. And I'm hopeful, as Representative Jones, that we can support a budget next year if, in fact, it's got a lot of these elements that are key to quality of life and dignity for people in this state. I've said before I wish we had windows in this chamber because it would be nice to look outside and actually be reminded of the people that we represent. You know, I take votes not for District 86 in Palm Beach County. I never have. I've been primaried because I vote the way I think I need to vote. And that's okay. I don't mind that because it's worth risking a loss in office to do the right thing and vote for all of Florida versus me. This isn't about me. This is about me operating in a 119 member chamber and working with you. That's what I came here to do and until today that's what I was hopeful would have occurred, but it hasn't. So let's do a better job, folks. I appreciate it. Um, it's also good to share some comments, even though I know this budget is going to pass. Mr. Th Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. With that, I hope everybody votes against this budget tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.